Hello, everyone. Just we're going to begin in just a few seconds, just making sure we can connect to Facebook and we'll get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Torres Siete Museum of Contemporary Art. My name is Keith Tomlin, and I'm the um, one of the the people here at Torres Siete. And I'm going to take you today through an opening reception and artist Q and A with Noel Suarez. We have a new exhibition in our museum of his works. It is available for you to view anytime in our museum. If you go to our website, torosiete.museum, you'll see all of our exhibitions. We are an online fine art museum and gallery, which features over 30 artists from 10 countries all over the world. We have virtual 3D exhibitions of our artists work that stay in our museum that allow you to navigate through and examine the exhibitions at your own time in your own way using multiple devices. You can access them 24 hours a day from your own home or any mobile device. So when you're in our museum, we have many artists exhibitions. We have lots of other activities that we do here like this live Q&A. And so today we're focused on Noel Suarez, of course. We have an exhibition again called Consequentially Noel. This is an exhibition of works of over 30 years worth of artworks from Noel. Those of you that don't know Noel, um, Noel is originally from Cuba. He moved to the United States in the 80s. Before he moved, he was already a world renowned ballet dancer. When he moved to the United States, he continued working in ballet professionally for many years until he stopped his career in ballet and started painting. He quickly became a starter of the Miami art scene he has been working um, in lots of different mediums and lots of different techniques, which you'll get a, a sense of from this exhibition. And he has, um, his works have appeared in major motion pictures, major advertising campaigns, charity auctions worldwide, and he has collectors all over the world. And we're very honored to have him here today. Um, just say a quick hello, Noel. So that hello, everybody. see that you're there. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm very happy to be here. I'm ready to answer any questions that you may have. Great. So one of the things we want to show everyone right away is the exhibition. So we're going to take you on a quick little tour of our 3D virtual exhibition. And this is where we, from our website, you can do this at home, you can go to Noel's page, noel.torsiete.museum, and access his 3D virtual exhibitions. I'm inside of Consequentially Noel right now, and I'm going to take you on a little overview tour of the exhibition. When you access the 3D exhibition from our website, if you're using a desktop computer, you'll be able to go into the exhibition right away by clicking on it. If you are using a mobile device, you may need to download an app and then go back into the exhibition and it will launch inside of your app. So what we're seeing here is a collection of works that some of these works are some of his earliest paintings. Some of these are very recent paintings and we're gonna talk about them more in detail later on today, but I just wanna give you a little peek at the works in this exhibition. All of the works have a nice story behind them. We have, um, we're thankful that Noel has provided some great explanations and stories behind each of these works. So you can learn a lot about the history of the work, what inspired him to do that particular work. And this is great because you can sort of see them all here. When you're using the exhibition from home, you can use the arrow keys, you can use the mouse to navigate through. There's also a catalog browser that you can open up and click on an individual work and have the system automatically navigate you to that particular work. When you're in the exhibition 
feel free to get as close to the work as you possibly can. One of the things that we love about our platform is that you can really get close and see the details of all the works in the exhibition. You can use the arrow keys to zoom in. You can use keyboard controls to go up and go down. And you can also get more information about the work by clicking in the upper right hand corner of the screen that'll drop down a menu that will allow you to read the story a little bit easier if you're far away from it on the screen. You can shop our museum gallery store. Some of these works, the originals are available. Some of these we have fine art prints available. So that's a way that you can check that out as well. So let me just continue browsing through here. And while we're here today, we have people watching live on our Facebook page. We also have people watching via Zoom and the people that are on Zoom, as well as the Facebook people, we encourage you and we invite you to send us your questions so that we can have Noel answer any of the questions you have. Um, we're also gonna talk about some specific works as well. But if you are on Zoom, we also invite you to participate via video. Um, if you would like to ask your question live and your video be shared with us, uh, just let me know in the chat. And when I get a chance to call on you, I will turn on your video and you can join us here on the panel. This looks amazing. It's truly an amazing program. We just have a comment, Noel, from Karen saying, it's wonderful to see your work. Congratulations and excellent format. Oh, thank you. Karen? Yes. We have uh, a David Lum saying hello from Canada. We have David Lum saying hello from Canada. Oh, wow, this is great. This is one of my, uh, that's excellent. That's excellent. This is what this is what I love about this. The fact that you know uh, it, something like this is is actually a great a great advantage because if I have an exhibit here in Miami, you know, or in LA, whatever the the situation would be, you know, you can only count with the people that are going to attend that exhibit there. But in something like this, we're going to have people from pretty much all over the world. You know, there are there are friends and collectors of mine and they're going to probably join in a little while, then they were supposed to be getting ready to, you know, go to bed and they're going to stay up because they are in Athens or in Paris or in Milan, you know, so whatever their situation is, it's, it's, it's amazing the fact that we can all get together. That's know, right. That's based right. on this medium, which literally, regardless of the present reality that we have to deal with it, it's actually a wonderful venue because you can just do an exhibit whenever you want to and then invite the world to attend. And uh, that's, is, to me, that's my favorite part so far. <laughs> so we do have some questions pouring in and some other hellos. We have Ellie, uh, who's your niece. She's very proud of you and you love, she loves your talent and artwork. Oh, my niece, which is also and my she's dad. Also well, she's also um, the most beautiful one that you have. Which one? Uh, Ellie. Ellie's asking which one is the most beautiful one? No, she's saying that she is the most beautiful one. Oh, no, that's definitely Ellie. Yeah, that's her. <laughs> we also have Jim um, Reidenbach. I, Reidenbach. I oh, my God. Yeah, Amanda Jim. Saying hello. But we hello, do Jim. We do have a question, Noel. So let me get to our first question. Jim, by the way, Jim, Jim, Jim is a collector of mine from Atlanta, who has 
amazing pieces and they were actually commissioned just for him. And hopefully we'll get to show those some other time, but I'm so happy that he's joining us. So let me ask the first question. And this is from Ginger. She's asking, the eyes in your paintings are very distinctive. What are your thoughts and feelings when you're painting them? Honesty, nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, I get that, and by the way, Ginger, hello. Um, Ginger was actually uh, on board my last Oceana Artist in Residence on uh, Riviera, so uh, we met and she really became a big part of my of my exhibits and my demonstrations. But going back to the question, um, I actually, there is some, that's just something that happens very organic. I don't think of the eyes, of course the eyes are, you know, the window to the soul, but there is, they all have that uniform sort of feeling to them. And really, I don't put that much thought into it. Sometimes they're a little more alert than other, but you know, they have this sort of, I, the energy on them is, is kind of like a little bit seductive, at times more sweet, at times stronger, but it's just something that comes as a result of the whole personality of that character that I created. You know, that's basically the, the most concrete answer that I can give you on that. But it happens a lot. A lot of people will say your eyes are just this, you know, very intense, but and then again, soft feeling to them. And, and it's something that represents me in, in pretty much all the paintings. That's great, that's great. I actually have a live person that wants to um, come on video. So let's see who we have here for you. Is it a surprise? <laughs> it might be a surprise. Let's see if we might have some trouble connecting. So we're gonna see if she pops in. Um, we do have, um, another question. So your use of color is magnificent. Love you. seeing your work. And this is um, Sybil from Istanbul, Oceana. Oh my God, Sybil. <laughs> oh no, okay, we have, sorry, we have, hello. We have Beatrix Hi, Black here. <laughs> Beatrix, hello. It took me so long to get into it. Hello, hi. Hello, Beatrix. So honored to have you in my exhibit. Hello. So lovely to see to see you with your work, with your um, fa family, with <laughs> your with all my babies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really is with your expression. Good. Thank you for coming, Beatrix. It's great to see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm so I'm so pleased that you decided to stop by. Stay around for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I stay. I am not good with the zooming. I'm learning it. I'm not so good with that, but That's, I got in. Oh. Yes, yes, yeah. it's great to see you. OK, thank you. So we're going to um, go back to, we have a question from Jan Bill. Oh, it's just a congratulations, it's not a question. Uh, what to Sibyl? Jan, uh, Jan and Bill from North Carolina. Congratulations on your exhibition. Thank you, thank you so much. And, right, so, okay. Yeah, they just said hello. Oh, okay. They, there wasn't a question. Oh, and his brother says hello. Oh, and your brother says hello. My brother's here. Your brother is here. We I, actually have a lot of people here. They're just being very quiet. Hi, <laughs> hermano. So let me focus on a particular work then um, until we get some other questions. Yeah, let's get really close. What happened to Sibyl? Sibyl was just saying how or she had a question. She was saying your use of color is magnificent and loves seeing your work. That was, that was her, her statement. She's a sweet, sweet woman. 
So what I want to do is go to this first piece in, in the exhibition here, Color Study One. Um, this is a piece that you created in 1992, and you state this is your first oil painting to fully capture Art Deco figurative cubism. Yeah. This is a piece that has been in your private collection and never been offered uh, to the public before. So nope. um, what can you tell us about this piece? Well, like you just say, this piece, actually, it was my coming to age artistically to the next level where I wanted to go. Um, before this piece, um, there was many other pieces, but um, because I actually professionally, I started painting in 1987. So I was trying to find my way and, you know, searching and doing my own studies because I knew that I knew what I wanted to express, but, you know, only by doing and by researching is that one found one's uh, self artistically, you know. So it wasn't until I came to the work I love how we can get really close to the pieces. That This is like my favorite part of all, getting like right on top of it. I love that. Um, when I found the work of Tamara de Lempica, which is my muse, and um, kind of like just that sort of like put me in a place where I just needed to sort of follow it was my, my, my discovery to entering a level of understanding the passion that I already have for Art Deco, the passion that I already have for Cubism and figurative and classical work. And she was the one who really pretty much taught me uh, how to find that. Color study was my first try at also working with oils because uh, to the point I was working with inks and pencils and acrylics, airbrush, a lot of airbrush. And, and so this was something that I say, I need to get into the oils because I know that what I want to achieve, it cannot be achieved the way I want to with the other uh, mediums. So this was my first try and arrow uh, of trying to come up with something that it was going to satisfy me artistically and know that it was kind of like the entrance into a whole new world, which is what made this piece very, very special. And um, I showed it in, the, in my very first exhibit in Miami Beach, back when South Beach was just a special little place for us. <laughs> and I had the gallery on Lincoln Road, and this is where I have my first exhibit. And she was part of that exhibit. And um, since that point on, all the other pieces were sold. And this one sort of like, I was hoping that it was never sold because I wanted to keep it, which I did. But then again, it's been hiding. You know, it's been in hiding. And I decided to put it out and I cannot live with my work at home. In the studio, yes. But once I leave the studio, I can, I have other artists' works in, in the house. and. But um, I put her in a place because my partner, Louis, he, he loves this piece as well. So I put it in a sort of hallway in parts of the house. So that way I see it in passing and I don't have to see it. So, and then all this time it's been, in, you know, sort of like in hiding. And I decided that since our idea of this exhibit, making a sort of like a, I don't like to use the word retrospective because uh, to me, the retrospective is more towards much further back down the road. <laughs> oh, we'll, and, we'll do this again. We'll do this again 30 years from now. Don't worry. So that's why I like the, I like the title that, that, that you use for this. That's really good. So for this piece, for this exhibit, I thought it was great to bring her. And then that also brought me onto, onto the idea of bringing others that literally were just hiding on my storage. Uh, art and um, like Naciendo, for example, or um, The Birth too. Pieces that also represent different uh, moments of my, of my whole artistic career, which is what- Yeah, let's, 
let's take a look at some of those other works. So I wanted to show everyone, um, you know, starting with the color study one, we also are showcasing sort of the evolution over time of a, sim a, a popular subject with you. I'm painting the Madonna. We exactly. have a series of work here going from 1992 to 2009 with the urban Madonna. And then most recently, um, this one here, which you can see sort of the evolution of your style and your technique with the progression of these four paintings. So it's, it's really kind of cool to see them all together like this. Yeah, this one, this one is, is, is the, I finished this piece actually uh, right the transition from, it was right before New Year's, I finished the, the Madonna de Santorini. And, um, and this is, you know, when I see the evolution, because I really, I don't really see the evolution because when I'm, I'm only working on the present piece, you know, and I'm a person, I, you kill me when you do this. I love, but I love the fact that we can get so close to them. I mean, look at the texture, everything you see on here. You can do, you cannot do this in a regular gallery. This would never happen in a regular gallery to be yeah, this close. <laughs> it would send off the alarms for sure. We have a couple of questions that have popped up. Uh, Steve okay. Haas wants to say, it's so great to see you. He wants to know what the name of the club on Washington Avenue was that you had the entire back wall uh, a huge Noel masterpiece. I'm surprised he doesn't remember because Stephen Haas is basically a person that knows everything about Miami and the beach. I mean, he's like the, the king of hospitality and the president of the whole Miami Chamber of Commerce. And I mean, he's, he knows everything. So I'm surprised that he doesn't remember that, which, by the way, it wasn't a club, Stephen. <laughs> it was a restaurant, and that was Folia, Folia Restaurant. Yes, in Folia Restaurant, I, I was commissioned to do a mural, which was actually a four-piece canvas, and each canvas was 12 feet by nine feet. So all of them put together with the cross in the middle became this painting, and it was called Il Bucato, which end up becoming a very popular piece of mine, but it was commissioned for this one restaurant. And it basically, the restaurant was very long, kind of narrow and very, very long. So you will see her all the way in the back from the moment you walk in. And as you became closer to the tables and closer to the bar, she would just grow on you and it would be this giant woman. Beautiful piece too, El Bucato. That was from 1994. Okay. We have another question from Walter Rodriguez. He says, hi, Noel, congratulations, beautiful work. Hey, Walter. Um, he, yeah, he says, many artists go through stylistic changes throughout their career, whether they're subtle or dramatic. How has your style evolved over the years? My style basically evolves, and by the way, Walter is another great artist here in Miami, a great, great artist that I'm, I met recently, but we have grown uh, quite nice. And, and he's a great guy and a, an amazing artist. So if you get a chance, check his work as well. But to answer his question, um, the evolution in my case, it comes, uh, it comes pretty much from my theatrical background as, as a ballet dancer. I, you know, as a dancer, you, even if you do the same role several times, you always have to improve it, change it a little bit. Otherwise it becomes extremely monotonous. As it becomes monotonous for you, the audience will feel that and then it, it will not work. So that was something that was very present for me in all my years of dancing. And painting is the same. Even if I sort of repeat a specific painting or drawing, my normal thing is to just sort of change it to add to it, to make something different, because that's what keeps me interesting. Like, perfect example, um, the different Madonnas, I, you know, I have been commissioned, there are images of mine that have up to four different generations. Because when I have done the first original painting that just came out, um, all of a sudden, 
there is somebody who wants another original of that piece. And right away, I tell them it's not going to be the same because I just I, I just can't do that. It's, it's not what I do. Yeah. And, I mean, even when you look at these two here, the the Madonna from 1992 and the Irma Madonna, they, they have very similar poses, but they're dramatically different. So exactly. even if you were going to repeat one of them, you would have different shading, different colors, different backgrounds and Exactly. And if you see the color study one, which actually the most drastic change, it was between color study one and the first Madonna. Because although the inspiration is sort of similar, just from the point of view of composition alone, there is a lot of difference on them. Yeah. Which plays a big role on this. And then also technically, and in reality, this painting was pretty much towards the end of 91. And then this one, that's the Madonna, it was towards the end of 92. So between them, it is really only a year when you're thinking about it. But then again, my the study that I actually did between the two of them, just alone with working with oils and finding myself through oils and how much I can do with the oils, it really allowed me to make them one totally different from the other. Um, I just cannot go back to do something that it looks exactly the same. It's not within, within my DNA. <laughs> so let me shift over to this group of paintings here. Um, these happened in the early 2000s, 2004, 2017, and 2019. Um, so I want you to tell us the story about this one, the offering. Because it's uh, a great story. People can read it when they go through the exhibition, but I want you to share the story because it's a it's a fantastic story. Well, the story behind the offering is really is just um, it's very unique because um, locally I'm very fortunate that I get to travel a lot with my artists in residence uh, with Oceana. We travel all over the world. But one part of the world that we all, that I get to go often, which is my favorite part of the world, is the Mediterranean. And within the Mediterranean, there is, um, of course, you know, Morocco and Casablanca, Gibraltar, all these places where the whole Moroccan lifestyle is so strong. It really gets my attention. And this happened, and uh, as I was walking through the Medina in Casablanca, um, walking around the Medina, and it was already about the beginning, the late afternoon into sunset. And as I'm walking through this arch, I see this woman, which she was a beggar. A beggar is something that you find pretty much in every Medina. That's just where they go to beg, or the other ones selling everything, <laughs> and which is what I love them. It's a wonderful experience to, to be in the Medina of Morocco. And, so basically I walked to this arch and there was this woman that she was very beautiful, but you can really see her face and the energy that I'm getting through her body and begging, you know, and that mano, that mano, sorry, that, that hand, it was just out the whole time. As I'm walking around and I go to that arch and down to this hallway, this is what I saw. I saw this silhouette, this form of this woman with this hand which was actually for a small woman, she had big hands. And it was something that I cannot stop thinking about it, thinking about it. So when I got back to the hotel, I started sketches and only to realize that she was begging. But and then again, for me, I see it as the offering because she offered me such a beautiful inspiration of a moment, you know, that was already beautiful for me because this was already my second time in Casablanca and so I knew my way around and I was really enjoying being there and then at that moment just as I go further into that hallway it became almost like a tunnel and all I see on the other side it was pretty much like the sky with all the elements of the Medina and her is still in the same pose just resting like that with the other hand out like that and she had a fabric on 
than, you know, of course, I take my artistic um, license <laughs> to turn the moment to what Noel really sees in his mind. Right. But uh, that's the story behind it. And still, there is another one. There is another painting that also came from the outside the Medina in Casablanca the year before, which is called, it's called En La Esquina. And you haven't seen that one yet. No, but no. Uh, that's also another little Casablanca moment. <laughs> we do have a comment about this piece since we're talking about it from Mary de Mesa. Um, the offering I agree. Is, yeah, she said this is her favorite one. Congrats on this wonderful exhibition. The gallery is absolutely beautiful. She admires your talent very much and she's delighted to be part of this exhibition. Thank you for coming, Mary. Mary's a very sweet and special friend. So let me go back and talk. We do have another question from Jill. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say your name correctly. I'm sorry, Jill Lefkowitz. Um, and I do know some of the answers to this, but I'm gonna let Noel answer this question. Um, what? artists, other artists inspire you? Oh my God. Just, um, that's, <laughs> we need to, we need to have like a, an, an, an hour and sit down and take pencil, pencil on paper so you can write, write them all down. I, I love, every artist has something unique to offer. Starting all the way from the masters, classical masters, of course, Leonardo, I love everything about Leonardo. And um, there, is, um, there is so many, every one of them has something to offer. So I go from, I have to go first to the period to think of the artists that influenced me and that I love on that period. So going back to that time, Leonardo, Michelangelo, of course, are my all time favorite, my number one, number one favorite, which is Gian Lorenzo Bernini. As, as a sculptor, that's like, to me, nothing to take away from Michelangelo, but Bernini is just perfection in every single way. And ahead of his time, because his fabrics, they have beautiful fluidity in their plates and the movement, but and then at the end, they will, and then extremely cubistic, very sharp angles in his fabrics than back then, Nobody even, I mean, cubism was like not even in the equation, but somehow Bernini has this intense with the structure. So that's, you know, and then of course, teaching, I don't know, Raphael, <laughs> Tintoretto, and then we can go into Velasquez, uh, Picasso, Brock. Mm, really, it's, yeah. I, I find, I'm actually, if you really analyze my work, in details. Of course, the figurative cubism and the Art Deco influence is in there. But if you really study my forms and my knowledge of the body, it's totally more classic. I, you know, in order to be able to deconstruct something, you have to know it well in order to make your statement and still show where it came from. You know, so if you analyze my work, like that one right now behind you, speaking of Bernini, Martirio. Martirio is my favorite Bernini uh, sculpture, which is the rapture of Persephone. And it is with all, all the massive pieces of Bernini at the Borghese Gallery in Rome. And so I, I did a, a beautiful, I, I have taken so many photos of that sculpture studying it all the way around. And um, so I basically took her and in create the same position to create my own image. But actually, if you study the sculpture as I have in so many hours and details in Galleria Borghese, um, although he is extremely realistic in certain parts of the angles are Kind of like there, as, as a way I have them right there in the in the painting. So this painting reflects classicism, cubism, 
and the whole entire combination, and including some Art Deco, because what happened also is that once an artist finds, you know, that, you know, melange, <laughs> melange of styles, a melange of artists, you know, because, and then even after that generation, I can go all the way to present because, and then we have the whole modernism era, you know, Andre Lott, Tamara de Lempica, you know, Brack, and so on and so on to, you know, Miro, I, it's just endless. It's endless yeah. amount of, you know, somehow I love all of it. And if you actually, yeah. you, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I did want to highlight that in the exhibition, we have sort of grouped some of these by some of your influences. So here, one that you didn't mention already um, was Gustav Klimt. And you can see that in the whole Secession series, exactly. because here we go with your experimentation with Art Nouveau and but putting your own spin on it as well, of course. Exactly. So. Just exactly. That, that, that. That, that's a perfect sample right there. Cessations came, you know, for almost two and a half years in my mind, which is really the one that creates and the one who come up with the idea. It's all my subconscious. I'm just, I'm just responding to it. But I've been wanting to pay homage to Klimt and the whole Art Nouveau uh, movement, which is right before Art Deco, you know, and um, and I love Art Nouveau, and of course I love Clint Musha. I love. See, there you go. There's, there's pretty much. I don't see that. I, I, I can say that I don't like one artist. I find that somehow they all have something to offer. And to me, this, this collection, um, which is still in progress, I haven't finished all of them because one thing that I was surprised how time composed. This was this this was by, by far the most intense time wise collection I have ever done. So it's very time consuming. So I'm, I'm happy that I got to do those five or six of them first, only to for them to be all gone very quickly. This is my most successful collection. The paintings, all the originals were sold halfway before they were even finished. And um, they didn't even care how I was going to finish them. And, and some of them had to wait a long time for me to finish them. but. This collection is basically tells you exactly how I pay tribute to Clint and the Art Nouveau style, even with the title of them, Secessions. I didn't know how I wanted to title, and I don't like to I don't like to give a title to my paintings that it becomes very obvious to what it is. Even for that. I'm very complicated. <laughs> I like to go and search. And sometimes I do it in Italian, in French or in Spanish, and then English, of course. But Secessions is a perfect sample of that because it was very hard for me to come through Noel and still pay homage to Clint, Mushka, and everybody within the Art Deco movement. And the, the, actually the name, going back to the name Secessions, the reason that I name it Sessions is because it was the name of the person, of the artist who was giving, because up to that point, uh, Art Nouveau didn't have a title, just like Art Deco didn't have until 1970s, until the 70s. At that time, Art Nouveau didn't have, a, a, it was not named, it was just in the style. And originally, before Art Nouveau, just to be able to refer to it as a collection, as in a style, it was given the name Secessions, which is the last name of the president of the organization of the committee that represents Art Deco, which Clint was the first director of. So the name Secession, the, the name, uh, the name the Secessions came from, from that own research that I did. I think we have a someone that's joined us on Zoom that wants to ask a question. Okay. Rick, are you there? Hi, Noel. Yes. Oh, hi, Rick. How are you? Fine. <laughs> your work is beautiful. I've always loved it. I love the style. Your uh, what you have you brought, I think, to today, the beauty and art of yesterday, but yet you make it your own. You give it your own special touch. 
and I just wanted to say hi and congratulations. Thank you, Rick. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for your words. Very, very special. And that is really, that's, that's what I like. I, you know, I love, I'm an old soul. I'm, I'm, I'm an old soul. So um, I, I actually, I can help it. I, I feel like I'm living now, but then again, so many things of the past are so important to me, which is basically what Ricky said. That combination of me being here and presenting what I do to today's society, but with a great deal of influence from the past. Cindy and Stephen also made a comment that Secession 7 is beautiful. <laughs> oh, this is, this is wonderful. So many people from, this from San Diego. Cindy and Stevens are collectors of my work. And I met them also through Oceana. Through Oceana, through all my eight years, and my artist in residence with Oceana, which I cannot say enough about, I have met so many wonderful people. And Cindy and Steven happens to be a couple in that special group of, of special people from Oceana. Uh, they have traveled with me already about, I wanna say seven times. Wow. And most, of, and, and most of them all have been crossing. They love to do the crossings with me so we can get lost in my work. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So let me shift over and take another look at another group of works as well. Because earlier you were talking about the influence of movement and showing emotions through the body and the body's movement. So oh, yeah. that's a perfect segue to talk about Lost Ocean, which is a series that you've done many of, but we have three of them here. Yes, this is another series also. Um, right before Secessions, actually. Um, I believe these are from, I wanna say- 2017. Yes, yeah, 2017 to 18, something like that. Um, and um, lost emotion. One cannot go without the other. An emotion creates emotion. An emotion creates emotion. So, it, so it's kind of like you cannot separate them. So what I wanted to do uh, was to showcase in these works the area where the initial movement a start when that time where your subconscious tells you what you're going to do, how you're going to move in that moment, how the body responds. So basically the concentration of the painting, like for example, on her is in here and just trying to stay away. You know, she's sort of like pushing, you know, but you don't know if she's pushing or she's telling you maybe later, but basically the area, that's why I cropped them all. They all crop to the point where it becomes more clear to the viewer where the emotion and the motion starts in that painting. In those paintings, actually. And all of these three are, I think you've told me once or twice that one of your favorite things to paint on is Arches paper. Um, you have a lot of works, especially all of the Silhouetta series, the Lost Emotion series, they're all on uh, this heavy arches paper, which you can see sort of the watermark here in the image, you can see that it has an uneven edge. What makes this paper so exciting for you to, to work with? Well, besides the fact that it's beautiful, and it has a, a very nice off-white tonality, and it's you know, it's the only, is the most well-known company that still makes handmade paper called press, you know. So these 300 pound arches can take so much abuse, even more than a canvas. A canvas sometimes when you push too hard, when you're working with a lot of medium and you push in, you know, you get certain dents and stuff that you have to wait until the canvas sort of adapts again to come back to normal. Arches from the charcoal drawing, spraying, painting, layering, gesso. I mean, there is, uh, if you go, if we go and analyze the texture on the Madonna di Santorini, in the Madonna di Santorini, be, 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 her, outside her drawing or her face, 
the whole background of that metallics gold and all the oil glazes on top of it are all done on a very extremely thick layers of gesso, like extremely thick because I wanted to really come over right through the painting uh, that I was using. So artists can just, our art just takes a lot of abuse. <laughs> and then once you're done with it, it just comes back beautiful. And of course, those borders that are just amazing. The borders of arches, which are just amazing. You know, so we also have um, a question from um, Peter Poliak, who I must say, Peter, thank you for the beautiful video that you made of Noel. Uh, we have, um, you can find a wonderful little mini documentary of Noel and his process and his thoughts on our website at noel.torosiete.museum. Um, it's also on YouTube and many other places. But Peter has a question other than congratulations. He wants to know how you decide when and how much of the composition is pencil and how much of it is color or paint. Well, that's a very good question. And of course, only another great artist would do that, <laughs> would ask that kind of question. Peter is an amazing artist himself, painter, classically trained, excellent artist. He just happens to work doing this other art, which is the videos. But coming from him, it doesn't surprise me. And composition is everything on a painting, as he knows. And I really don't decide, as every one of my paintings starts at the drawing. That's my classical training of drawing. Whenever something comes to mind, I rarely just go for what I want. I have learned that the more I draw and the more I work in the study with graphite, the better painting I'm going to have. So, and then also once I go into the canvas of the paper to after I'm done working in that study, I go into the drawing to create the painting that I'm going to then put medium on. But in order to achieve the composition, which is extremely important. Composition is the most important thing that you need on a painting in order to make somebody stop and look. Composition is just a balance and the composition is just number one. And I achieve that as I'm drawing. As I'm drawing, I do a lot of that studying. And then I decide to either cover all the painting with my oils, with the mediums, or sometimes I decide to leave some uh, just as a drawing or parts as a drawing. That's what creates that moment that I have of letting the piece come alive, you know? I always say this to a lot of artists, that the most beautiful thing, and of course, I learned it through the years, the most beautiful thing is to sort of, you have a concept, you have an idea, you do the sketch, the study, and then just let the piece evolve. Don't set yourself on something that it has to be this way and just concentrate on that finished product. Just sort of let it happen. Do something, look at it. Don't work on it for another two days, come back to it and then just let it evolve. I think that that's the most important part because you end up with a much more close painting and you will be artistically um, a lot more satisfied. But again, it's not a decision that I make at that moment. Sometimes they all become a painting totally covered with paint. And sometimes the drawing stays true because I, the reality is, and I love drawing. I can spend, I can just do a whole painting that is a drawing. <laughs> and it's, it's just something that I do enjoy very much. <laughs> We have a few more questions. We first have a comment um, from someone you probably know who this is, but I don't know who this is. So uh, the comment is great to be around mas a master, amazing. As I said long ago, God created Noel and Noel created art. That's Jean Paul. <laughs> and he also says, did you know you're my inspiration, the one to encourage me to keep on and developing his photography work? Oh, no, I didn't know that. I didn't know that about him, but I'm very, I'm very happy and I'm very um, pleased that 
he can see. I love I love to inspire people because I've been inspired by so many. I mean, I'm I have my own library of inspiration. So, and I think that's something that it just happened. But in case his photographs are beautiful, if you go to Instagram and follow him on Instagram, there is the, he has beautiful compositions. I speak of composition. He captures beautiful compositions through his photographs. But thank you, Paul. He's a great guy. Also Cuban. He happens to live in Germany, but he is Cuban. Okay. Well, and, thank um, you for for calling in. It's it's awfully late in Germany today, so thank you for staying up to watch us live. Yeah. Thank you. We have a another comment from Facebook and it's from the Jajira Jajira Bagari. Jajira Bagari. Oh, Jajira. Jahira. Jahira. Okay. I, I apologize. <laughs> every, every piece is precious and tells. Every piece is precious and tells a story. It touches your soul. Thank you. That's, you know, coming from her. She's, Jahira is such a beautiful, spiritual person of great principles and a great human. So for me to hear that is, is, is very special because it is true. I, you know, I, I, I paint with my heart in my hand. I don't, I don't hide anything. I express myself. In order to be a good artist, you have to be in touch with your feelings and really put up there what, what you have inside. And when somebody like Jahara mentions that, it shows me that I'm in the right track because, um, you know, it's actually a lot of people become closer to me once they see the work and when they understand the work. You know, they get to know me faster through my work. But Yahara and I are longtime friends from many, many years. <laughs> we have another question from Facebook. Uh, from Tara Solomon. From Tara Solomon. Has Noel ever oh my done? God, talking about somebody so special. Has Noel ever done a self-portrait? Has Noel ever done a self-portrait? Yes, he has. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he has. And it's not just one. It's actually seven of them, but Miami has never really seen that. No, they haven't. I've um, seen. By the way, I've seen uh, one. You seen one? Yeah, I've seen <laughs> um, one. It's amazing. Uh, by the way, Tara is another old friend, another wonderful Miami Beach, Miami pioneer from the beginning of life, and the queen of PR of Miami. You know, if you're in Miami and you want things done right. Tara Salomon and Nick D'Annunzio are the people for you to commission because they really are wonderful at what they do and extremely wonderful people as well. But yes, you know, it's, it's interesting to, um, it's interesting to, to see that, you know, the, the connection, the connection that, that, that I have with all these people really is, 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 is so wonderful. That's I amazing. Got so wrapped up, I got so wrapped up in Tara and our connection, and I forgot the quest, the comment, the question. <laughs> what oh. was what she was saying? Um, have you? No, you did answer the question. It was about if you've done a self-portrait. Oh yes, I did, and it's actually it's called the Box Series, which eventually I'm going to bring it out again. So see, this this we're going to it's going to keep happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a piece that I did, it's a, it's a series actually, that I did in 1999. And they are all self-portraits of me inside this box representing, I kind of refer to it as my Via Crucis. Um, it's a very intense work. It opened at the Leslie Lohman Art Foundation in New York City, in Soho in 1999. And I was so wrapped up into producing this work which is too long to tell you how that happened. And it took almost seven months to put this all, these seven paintings together. Then um, when I actually saw a hanging, because it's, it's, a, it's actually installation, an installation of all seven paintings together that went right next to each other, that when you see it from the front, give you this curve feeling as you're looking at them. And um, when I saw it at the opening, at the gallery, I just kind of like lost it. I went like, my God, this is heavy. This is, it, it really knocked me off. And since that show ended, I just never show it again. Well, uh, Mary, Mary DeMesa says she wants to see them 
and she wants to know when, and she wants them to be here at Toro Siete. <laughs> well, we will get them to Toro Siete. And unfortunately, those originals, um, I'm not going to part, well, sorry, I have to part with three of them because the one person has two and another person has one, and they were very close special people that literally just begged to have these pieces. And only because of they were is that I agreed to let them have it. <laughs> I saw them, but um, the other ones I'm keeping because this is this is that one collection that, as we were talking a couple of days back, you and I about keeping you know keeping pieces. Yeah. This is one that I'm. This is one that I'm keeping, but I will show them. I will show them again. <laughs> we, we have um, Jim Reidenbach. I think Jim, if you can hear us, oh. Jim Reidenbach. Oh, Jim. Yes. Jim wants to say hello. He's right here. Go ahead, Jim. I can hear you. Can you see me? We cannot see you. No, I can see you. you but can. I can hear you. We can hear you, but you're just a uh, just your name is appearing on the screen. Oh, I was going to say, I'm sitting in a room full of Noel commissioned pieces. I wish my video worked. Oh no! I could show you my my living room is full of giant Noel murals, and I just cannot tell you how much I love all of them. And you know, I've interspersed them with some. Uh, I'm sorry, Jim. I am trying to enable your video, so I think I no, lost you. Not only, not only oh. about the painting, Jim has his whole apartment is commissioned. His all beautiful penthouse is commissioned. is is a gorgeous Art Deco masterpiece that is to die for. <laughs> so okay. my thing is, they look. Now we have. Now we have him. Now we have him. Hi, Jim. Sorry about that. Hey there. How are you? Jim! Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know how to change my background here, which is this lovely um, uh, Puerto Vallarta shot of my home in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, but I can't turn off that view. Otherwise, I'm sitting in my living room here in Atlanta and would love to show you all my Noel art that I have here because I've been collecting Noel since the 90s. So I have a lot of, you know, really, you know, what I'll call vintage pieces now. <laughs> um. <laughs> you can go into your settings at all. Um, and we can come back to you, Jim, if you if you go into the settings or the preferences for zoom, you can go under virtual background and turn that to none. And then we should actually be able to see what's behind you. It would be worth it because literally as, as something that it's just an architectural digest moment. <laughs> we'll oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I don't you know. You look fabulous. I... You look fabulous, by the way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so we'll that clean to... living. <laughs> so we'll come back to you, Jim, if you can get that um, background turned off. Noel, I wanted to um, also show everyone another group um, of works. So let's go back to the exhibition. And I want to talk about these two paintings that are a recent oh. collection. Um, we know that you recently finally went back to Cuba after 39 years. And these two works were inspired by that trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is, this comic, this uh, series is called Mujeres arbitrales, um, basically, you know, women's and stained glass windows. And the reason that I decide to focus on this because literally, if you right now Google O Havana, you're going to see this pretty much everywhere. And, you know, the sort of the construction of them is based on the actual present reality where some buildings are still in very good shape, but others are just destroyed. But the beauty of that original, you know, Spanish colonial architecture is still present. And so there is the, these paintings when I was actually, they were unveiled on my 
this was this happened in in March and April of last year, and with with another Oceana artist in residence, and um, so the unveil is all these paintings were unveiled right before we arrived in Cuba, and basically I want the Oceana guest to really prepare themselves mentally for what they were going to about to see. And let me tell you, they were in love with the paintings before we got there in the unveilings and when they saw it in the exhibit. But once we return, they cannot say enough of how, as they were walking themselves around Havana, my paintings were coming to their mind based on what they were saying. So this is a series and I'm gonna keep working on it because it is very close to my heart. It is my Cuban heritage. And in them, I'm paying homage to my favorite Cuban artists. Although it's no L painting, you know, there is a little bit of Amelia Pela in there. There is a little bit of Servando Cabrera Moreno in there. There is a little bit of Puerto Carrero in there. There is elements that somehow I'm trying to put in, but still coming as a Noel painting. We Very have a, yeah, we have a question from David Lum. He says that dreams can provide fantastical ideas for creating art. Have any of your paintings been inspired while sleeping? <laughs> yes. And they have woke me up and I have had to come straight to the studio and start working. Yeah, it does yeah. happen. It does happen. The beauty of having that separation between consciousness and subconsciousness, right? I can be tired, exhausted, and sl um, sleeping really well. And then all of a sudden, this goes on and it starts literally going at it. Then I know that I'm not going to fall back to sleep. So I might as well just come to the studio and let it out. So, yes, it does happen very much, David. That was a great question. We also have a comment from Jan and Janet and Bill Epstein, who went with you when you returned to Havana, and they hope to return with you again. It was so moving to be with you on that trip. They are amazing, wonderful. It's a wonderful couple, and you know she's a, actually she's a great artist herself. She does these amazing collages that are just the work that she put on them is just out of this world. And some of them can be very small and it's just amazing what she does. But she actually has one of my Havana series, which is called uh, Sirena de Mis Mares, Mermaid of My Seas, which is a painting that I haven't even had the chance to show it to you yet because it's the first one that I did actually for the ship that is called of the same name. There's a ship that Oceana has that is called Sirena. And, and it was for the initial uh, trip for Sirena to Havana which I did this one painting inspired by, it's too bad we don't have it because it's basically like my own Cuban mermaid that she's resting in the whole Malecon. And then you can see, although it's interpreted in my style of building with those blocks, cubistic blocks, if you know Havana, you recognize it because even the landmarks of the entrance to the port and everything, everything is in there. So I said, you know, I have to show you that one later on. See, it's too yeah. many paintings, too many paintings to put together. <laughs> well, that's okay. We have another set I want to focus on as well, because one of the things that I find so interesting about this exhibition, and it speaks to some earlier comments we've had, is, is how different they go from series to series. But of course, they're all clearly Noel paintings, but we have the element series that was done in 2010. We have two of the works from that series here. We have air and water. Yeah, this is another, another this is actually, it's, it's not really a series because it's the elements, which is only four of them. And um, it's earth, fire, air, and water. But the first one that I executed was actually water. Water was the first one that I, that I came into it. And then of course, air. Then again, this was the beginning of me starting to feel that sort of Art Nouveau inspiration coming in. And in this, I start expressing that a little bit. But also this is a topic that has been interpreted by many great artists for many, many years, centuries actually. So I wanted to come up with something that again, 
brings me. You know, that's that's my own personal challenge. Make sure that people recognize that it's me creating this world. And um, these paintings, they you know they they not really they look simple, <laughs> but they not because composition alone. Referring to Peter Spoliak's uh, question before, composition is everything in the pieces. You know, to get to that specific look and to cover that canvas as it was needed. Wow, well, look how amazing they look so close. It's this, I love that part. Um, they all have a very strong underpainting of gesso again, because I wanted to make sure that the detail of the metallics, silvers, and gold on air and in water, they were very, very obvious. You know, that three-dimensional look to them. And um, actually, which you didn't even know this neither, but I have a collection of beautiful silk scarves, Sir Moose scarf, made from these two paintings, which nobody knows them because so far, when I did it uh, with this another great artist, um, Elliot from La Isla, and we create this beautiful um, collaboration to do this beautiful long rectangle silk scarves, and it's of water and air, but a whole different composition as well. So that's just another part of me, that opportunity came about it and I decided to do it, but it's been literally only shown and available on Oceania, on the actual ships. I have never shown them in land. I'm sorry, <laughs> but um, eventually I'm gonna bring them out to, to the market in land and here in, in you know, outside Oceania. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of people would love to see them. So I want to take us again to one of your most recent paintings that we have in this exhibition. And later on, I will be sharing with everyone um, on our Instagram and in our, we'll do a special video about this piece because I recently saw a lot of photos of this piece during the process of which you painted this piece. And it kind of goes back to someone else's earlier question when they're talking about how do you start a piece? Do, how do you decide how much uh, charcoal and graphite to use and then when you, when you add color. So we'll learn soon the evolution of this piece, but let me put it on the screen now so you can see which one I'm talking about and then you can talk to us about it. I think I know which one it is. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, urban metamorphosis. Exactly. And actually, I don't know if Ginger is still around. She, she, she was with us in the beginning of the show, of the, of the show. <laughs> you know, the showbiz person always has to be present, right? Um, Ginger was on the voyage of Oceana with me, again, which was the last one of 2019. And she saw this painting come alive from the first rough original drawing. And she followed the whole evolution because I actually work quite a bit on this painting, to, in this painting, pretty much all the way to the end. I just brought it back home and I finished it at home in the beginning of 2020. Um, because I know that I needed to get more out of it. So I wanted to take my time with this painting, understanding also how not to go too far, which is very easy to do. And for that, you have to take your time. You have to let it breathe and then come back and listen to what the painting is telling you. Urban metamorphosis, this is, I wanted to go, this is as extreme cubism as I wanted to, I wanted to go in quite, quite intense in cubism and in movement, um, which is something representative of cubism. A lot of people see that cubism is just very, you know, stable, nothing, nothing move. And the combination of form creates a great deal of movement, but yes, in this piece from the drawing all the way to the actual finished piece, there's a lot of communication. And that's the reason why I was very conscious uh, on, my, on the artist loft on Oceana, as I was working on the art in the loft, I keep taking pieces, uh, photos to make sure that I remind myself the different steps that I went on waiting and seeing back and forth 
to come out with this. And actually, Ginger purchased the first artist proof of this piece, which I still have to finish and send to her in some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we're getting um, towards the end of the exhibition, but one already. Yeah, we've we've looked at them all almost. I mean, we can always go back. But one of the things I wanted to share with everyone um, was I did promise that we would have a little surprise today. And we all know Noel because of his his paintings. But I don't know if everyone knows that you are also a sculptor. So I want to share with them some views. Oh, my God. The dancer, we have here um, a couple of different views. Oh my God! How how do you how do you how do you end up doing this? It's magic. It is magic. You are amazing. You are amazing. So, so we have this sort of side uh, view, but we have a few other views of this piece as well. This is wow. a, sort of a back view. This is amazing. And, and it looks so beautiful. It looks so beautiful in the, in the middle of the gallery. This is, wow. So this piece is about 33 inches high. Um, it does have a, about a square uh, foot stand. It has a black onyx base and weighs about 48 pounds. Um, you are doing an addition 18 bronzes signed and numbered of this piece. Is that correct? Yes, it's 18 in the addition and five artist proof of which only one is uh, is available. It's only one left of the artist proof. They were all uh, purchases. And, um, but I'm, I'm so happy that you brought it because yeah, actually I, I've been dying to sculpt for a long time. And it wasn't until the opportunity of somebody who actually commissioned me to do my first two sculptures that I did in 2005, and which it was fun. I got I got totally hooked because the sculpting. Um, I know that a lot of people might not understand this, but sculpting is actually drawing. It's drawing 3D basically. You just mold and put things together and keep going and going and going, and it's instant gratification because you don't have to worry about light or shadows, nothing because. It's 3D, everything is happening. So I've never taken a, a sculpture class. It just sort of happened and I did it and that's the result right there. So I'm actually working on new ones now on wood. I'm going to do this very cool series of smaller pieces that they all sculpt on wood, right out of four by fours. I had a whole bunch of four by fours left from a work that it was done here in the house. They're about, I want to say maybe 24 inches tall. Wow. And, you know, so within that four by four, I have these whole different forms that are coming out. Very me, very cubistic, very simple, but very, very nice. So that's going to be, that's down the road as well. Yeah. We have a few comments back. Um, well, A, before we leave the sculpture for now, we have a comment from Moises Rahela from Puerto Rico saying that he thinks your sculpture is amazing. Thank you, Moises, thank you. It's, it's you know, it's, it's the work in in that piece, is, it was so intense. Uh, I don't know how many hours I work on the actual original mold before we did the cast and everything else, which is an amazing process. You know, the lost wax technique and the whole different molds that you have to do in order to do one, <laughs> you know, so it's a, and the details, especially on the hair, it's, it's just out of this world, out of this world. And so I, I need to make sure that I, that I give you more detailed photos than with your artistry and your magic than you have in the computer. Yeah. Yeah, you can we come out with this reality scene that are just mind blowing. Yeah, we, then, we would um, love to do an exhibition purely focused on this sculpture. Um, we have a few more comments. Um, back to the painting that's behind me, uh, right here. Uh, Ginger, who was you mentioned before, was with you when you painted this live on on Oceana Cruise. 
said it was amazing watching this develop in just a few days. Yeah, is is you know that is that is the beauty of the Oceana Artist in Resident program because basically you're spending time with a specific group of people, which I have to say, Oceana's guests are just art lovers. And Oceana is all about art because the art collection on board the ship, any museum will kill to have the pieces that are part of the Oceana private collection on board the ships. So to have something like that, I call it like the perfect art utopia because here we are traveling around the world, having an amazing time. But meanwhile, I have a, a you know, the artists have it, an artist love, which is five times the size of my studio, is huge, full of windows. And, and to, have that, to have that, you know, moment where you are in touch with people that really follow what you're doing, and it creates this, this amazing connection that is, is, is just, it's, it's, I cannot say enough about that. And then I get to meet people like Ginger and Steven and Cindy. And my, I have my own list of, of Shiana collectors that I have you know, created in these eight years, which is just an amazing and beautiful thing. We so have yeah, it's nice to be able to create something. It's like having people in my studio all the time, which it doesn't happen, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's a wonderful experience to be able to be live painting and have people watching you and talking with you and interacting with you one on one. A lot of artists, you know, work in a studio and not in front of other people. So what an amazing experience that is. That it really doing. is. And that's the thing, because, you know, many people look at the work and they like it. Right. But and then having that ability of, of the, you know, the fact to have that chance where people can go beyond the image and into techniques and into um, what's behind the work, what's behind the artist. They get to know me extremely well because I spend some time between 10 to 25 days with these people. So it's really, and it truly is an amazing scene and I'm extremely happy that I'm part of it. And I can't wait to get back to it sometime soon. <laughs> I miss it. So we have a few more comments. Um, we have a very special comment from uh, Marissa De Lampica. She <gasps> says, oh, Noel, and congratulations. Marissa, oh my God. Look, I'm getting goosebumps because just Marissa De Lampica happens to be Tamara De Lampica's great granddaughter and the executor of her estate. So, I am extremely honored that you took the time to come and say hello in this special exhibit because you know the history that I have with Tamara and what she represents in my life. And we're actually preparing something very special here with Toro Siete coming up soon. So that's just a little hint, a little hint. I don't know if Marissa, you wanted to speak. There she is. Oh, there I am. Sorry, it is my first time on, on, on something like this. This is fantastic. Congratulations. Marisa, thank you for joining us. Yeah, sorry I was a little late, but uh, but here I am. Congratulations. I, I, you know I love your artwork, Noel, and it's just so beautiful and inspiring. And and uh, I know Tamara is a big inspiration for you. So, um, yes. Uh, there's many exciting things in, in our world, too, uh, that we'll have to discuss soon, but we're working uh, on a, a movie, a few new books, uh, hopefully an exhibition with you guys. And uh, yes, many, many yeah. exciting things. We're very excited and we're very honored and we're thrilled. Uh, so it's great to see you. Thank you for joining in. Yes, thank you. Congratulations. It's a, it's a great, great uh, way to share art with people in, in this situation. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Marisa. I really appreciate you taking the time to stop by. No problem. We'll talk soon, Noel. All right. We definitely will. Bye. Thank you. We also have a few other comments and questions. We have Jeanette says, hi, Noel. Beautiful work. Love how this gives an opportunity to get up close 
and personal with your art. And so great to get to know so much more about you as well. Thank you so much, and I'm really, really happy that this is happening. This is a wonderful scene. I, I this medium, then this guys. I mean, I know that this is something that a lot of people are doing now because of what is happening. But the beauty of Toro Siete is that me personally, it's amazing to be able to connect with art representative than they really have a passion and love for what they do, which unfortunately is not that often. And so being with you guys is really is, is a really a special treat for me because I know that we can get to do a many amazing scenes and no matter what I throw at you, you want to do it and you want to go for it and you work extremely hard to achieve whatever vision I have. So that is really a pleasure that I was able to meet you guys and to have what we have today. It's, oh. it's, and, and, and there's a lot more to come. So it's very, yes. very exciting. A lot more to come and we're very honored and, and excited to work with you. And this is just the beginning. We do have a few more questions popping up or comments. We have Renata Grant, who is- Oh my um, God, everybody's great. coming out of the woods. I love it. <laughs> She uh, says this is presentation is an, is an amazing experience and so informative. She's proud to be a collector looking forward to seeing more. That's great. Yeah, I met Renata a long time ago, also from Oceana, another Oceana collector and um, a wonderful lady. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's nice. It's funny, you know, I'm a huge believer that everything, every negative, makes a positive you know that's up to us of course that's only up to us but this is a perfect sample look i haven't even known that i keep in touch with these people right having an exhibit and having a platform where we can do this which of course we do in and now as a result of a necessity or a situation that is beyond us when everything goes back to what's going to be, you know, the new normal, as everybody keeps saying. And um, this doesn't have to stop. This is a great way for everybody to keep in touch in a very live, active moment of what's going on with many artists all over the world. That's you know? right. So it's, you know, in reality, in many ways, I think that it has more positives than to actually do it in an actual gallery. Because yeah, the human interaction is wonderful. But I can tell you that I could never, whenever I have done shows, there have been many shows, right? I have, I don't even remember what's happened in the show. They last two hours to three hours, you know, and they pack and there's a lot of people asking questions. A lot of people are just hanging out, drinking, having a wonderful time, looking at the work, but, you can never really get to have this, this quality, this moment of one-on-one -on -one with people. And, and actually look, again, people, how many people we have had here from so many different corners of the world, yeah. right? Showing up right. for this. So there is, there is a lot of benefits about this than it cannot be done physically in a gallery. So I think, I think that the next thing that we should mention before we leave is, what we have available, because I want, I, want, I want everybody to understand that although there is a lot of originals in this collection, only few of them are available. Uh, the other ones are just showing because of the purpose of, of showing the image and showing the history of the piece. But and then some of them as well, I'm going to have artist proof and limited editions. That's right. That's right. So one of the things that we pride ourselves with the Dorothy Museum is that we create exhibitions of artist work that can come from many different um, places of the world. And not only that, within an artist collection, the works can be displayed regardless if they're in private collection or not. And so we try to create exhibitions that tell a story that have a certain um, 
grouping and a, a theme and a collection, but we have the luxury of being able to show works that are in private collection, that um, are in different physical places all over the world. And back to what you were commenting about before, Noel, about this, this model that we have with our museum does extend beyond the current situation of people not being able to travel because the wonderful thing about what we're building here is that these exhibits don't go away. When you have a physical exhibition in a museum, in a, um, in a gallery, they're normally there for a limited time. You're only able to get the people that are physically able to get to that exhibition. Our exhibitions can be accessed from anywhere, from any place and don't go away. So of course, we all love to see art in person. I mean, you can't replace that, but this is the next best thing. And so, um, yeah, I wanna talk about your prints and I will talk about that before we go, but I do have Jim back. Um, Jim <laughs> oh. has-, has his, I was showing uh, you things. Yeah, well, Jim has some pieces and he's got his background so we can see some of the pieces, so. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm happy to share, I'm here. I, oh my God, now we are in gyms. Oh my God. <laughs> so back many, many years ago, Noel <laughs> painted oh. this commission piece for me. And I don't know if you guys, I'll try and get up close to it. Oops. Mm. The triumphant. Triumphant. Wow. Just a spectacular piece. And I commissioned that and Noel flew up to Atlanta and we both spent a weekend together and he was my guest in my home. A fabulous weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the, the weekend, I was driving Noel back to the airport and I said, my God, Noel, we never even talked about the commission. What are you gonna paint for me? And he goes, it's all up in my head, Jim. Don't worry about it. And that was that. And this is what I got back. And I absolutely loved it. Just spectacular. There's that piece. And about 12 years ago, I bought a artist proof from Noel that was shipped up to Atlanta and I put it in a box and it went into storage and I totally forgot all about it. And I just found it four months ago and it is now hanging. <laughs> this is do you remember when Steve House came about? Remember that Steve House came about and he said he was talking about the painting, the big painting that it was at the end of the restaurant all the way in the back? Yeah, yeah. We were... El Bucato, that's a painting. Okay. Of wow. course, that's an artist proof of, that's an artist proof. Uh, there was actually only two artist proof of that piece. And that was on, um, um, the original is in, in a private collection in Virginia, but Jim has one of the artist proof. And I was commissioned to create that painting in a, in a normal average size, which is what made it so special because the other one was exhausted to do. And I forgot that Jim had one of those. Yeah. And then in my ode to Tamara de Lampica, which is how Noel <laughs> and I fell in love with each other, I had this commission for me on oil 20 years ago. So for Marissa de, de Lempica on the call, this piece I commissioned 20 years ago from an artist in Europe, and I just absolutely love it. Well, it's Jim, I have, I have good news for you because now you can actually get the real original seriograph published by Marissa and another wonderful lady, art uh, publisher friend of mine, Drita Kessler. And, uh, they have the original seriograph of Lempica's Andromeda, which is out of this world. And oh, El Jardin, oh my God, I love this piece and I haven't seen it in so long. This is in El Jardin, which Noel, you would have painted this in 2004 for me. Wow. And wow. It's, it takes up, I don't even know if I can get it. It takes yeah, up- Yeah, go, go back, go back, go back. Let's see all the way back, look at that. I mean, oh, it's, wow. it's an enormous piece. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, I believe the measurement of that piece is as like 52 by 52, something like that, inches. Yeah, yeah. it's just, yeah, it's really enormous. So, Thank yeah, you. I have several pieces and 
I rotate them now in and out of the apartment here. So I just love all my pieces from Noel and I just wanted to share that with you all on the call. Thank, Thank you so much. This is, I mean, this is, see, there we go. Here we go again. We couldn't do this in a real opening, could we? You can do that in a gallery, you know? No, Not no. only that you bring somebody with a history with my work, uh, you know, like, like I always say, I, I, I cannot be, I, I just can't say thank you enough. I have such a massive family of collectors all over the world. So I love when that happens. Like when I go and I see the pieces again and I visit and I see the pieces, it's, you know, this, uh, that's what makes it for me because it's, it's just so unique to understand that somebody can not only appreciate and love what you do, but then they get so deep that it's a connection build that it just lasts for as long as we are going to last. And then the paintings continue to live on their own, but that's just, that's priceless. It's really priceless well, and I'm uh, really thankful. And I love the fact that I have been in your home in Miami to your studio. Yeah. And now Jardin, you and I stood there together and I watched you paint and do it all right there in the studio. You're standing. Yeah. And see that those, those, those stories, those moments is really what count on the life of an artist and on the life of the collector, because yeah. it is, it is truly, it, it's a relationship. It's something that it just, it happens because that connection is genuine, is honest, is real, because you're going to be living with it for the rest of your life. And, you know, and every time you see it. You know, even though I live in Atlanta, you know, I'm from South Florida and I, and I love the whole Art Deco look. And so, you know, again, the, you know, the apartment with my whole Art Deco seating and everything there, <clears throat> you know, it is, uh, Noel's art just was the perfect fit. And uh, so I'm just, you know, I've fallen in love with all your art over and over and over again, Noel. So thank you so much. It's been such and, a gift to and, me. And thank you. Thank you for thank you for just being you and thank you for loving what I do. As I, I'm extremely thankful. And I have a question for you, Jim. How did you come so quickly from Puerto Vallarta to Atlanta? <laughs> I teleported myself. <laughs> the magic, the magic of the internet. Jim, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Truly oh amazing, beautiful. Thank you. And we have Beatrix back. That looks amazing. Oh, I just, in I'm so excited. Huh? It was the most wonderful presentation of an artist's work. I have, yeah, I have once seen boys speak about his art. That was as exciting as what you just did. Just magnificent, magnificent and your joy and your connection with your collectors and that family of family of men you created around yourself and around your art. It's just absolutely bravo, bravo. Thank you, Beatrix. That, that means a lot coming from you. Thank you so much. It, it, it's, just, it's just really marvelous, really marvelous. I have so actually have a lot learned because I am, painting very still and very quiet and completely by myself. And the whole other persona, which is always out there, is that other, that other me. And I'm so, you, you are so connected with, the, and it's just magnificent. I have to kind of swallow it all. I have to eat that soup I just <laughs> got cooked. I'm sitting at table already. It's steaming, but it, it's marvelous. You're a marvelous artist, and I, yeah, I also have a secret, not really secret, but great love for Lempica, and I, yeah, it shows in my old work as well, which nobody knows, but maybe it will appear. It will appear. Rosiette. Yes, it will. Yes, well, it, I, it's I mean, very, it was marvelous, as if from all sides. Also, Keith, what a great, what a great job! This is this is world class, really world class. Thank and you, Beatrice. Thank you. Well, is just a fabulous speaker. You're just a fantastic painter and a 
fabulous technician and you you know what you are an artist beast you're a real fabulous artist beast big good thank you great thank you so much Beatrice. And, and you are you know you you also an amazing artist and you are you are a, 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 a walking exhibit you you are, you are one that express you, you express everything that you do in so many ways and your work, your paintings are absolutely beautiful too. I mean, that's that's one thing that got me when I went to see the exhibit in Fort Lauderdale this past December, and 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 I, you know, your work just grabbed me because it's, it's figurative. It has Thank also you. so many influence of masters and in a style that is you. But then again, you. you can see the mm -hmm. you can see the emotion and the relativity with other artists of the past that you admire as well. So, um, and then the fact that you have also this whole part of performing art, which I also have in my background with the theater and the ballet, but in this case, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, it's, you are more like a, like a walking installation. <laughs> you know? ah, thank you. But I, I, I just want, this is your moment and it's, it's absolutely wonderful. I thank you. I thank you for being you, really. You're a wonderful artist. I can't wait to visit. Me too. I'm actually, I can't wait to meet you in person. Invite me. I visit and, you. And, 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 and to spend time with you because, I mean, you are, you are the, the, the type of person that I like to relay with. And anybody that has so much creativity and, and also when, when everybody has their own entity of who they are, that's what attracts me to people. I, I'm always attracted when I see people that you can tell that they are themselves, you know? And the fact that you, you know, you have also this whole fashion part that you turn into art because fashion is an art. But then again, nobody knows oh. how to apply it. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows how to put yeah. it together. Yeah. So it's a, it all is, it all is really art of life. It really is one. It all is really one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm so enchanted, really. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm, I'm very happy that we actually got to finally to talk this way. So, <laughs> and that zooming is a wonder to me. You are my, my third or fourth zooming experience. So, I'm not yet that good, but it's, it's really amazing. Like well, your friend I, said, it's. I am looking work. forward. I am looking forward to your exhibit here in Toro Siete soon. So I'm going to be looking forward yeah, to that. Yeah, eventually, yes. Yes, wonderful. And, and I'm going to tell you. everybody, Thank so everybody you. come and see your amazing, beautiful work as well. Yes, we do have Thank one you. exhibition now. Um, but we are planning others as well. So thank you so much, Beatrix. It's lovely to see you. Tschüss. Thank you, Keith. Tschüss. Tschüss. Thank you. Merci. <laughs> Ciao. 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 Keith. Keith. Yes, can sir. I ask, can I ask you for a huge favor? Yes, you can. I know that we have La Negra behind this and we have, you know, well, since we're here, let's talk quickly about the fact that I'm doing La Negra is also from that era of 1992, which right. I love this piece. And um, so I'm actually doing a new version of La Negra which will be finished, I don't know when, but soon enough. And um, she's just a very special piece, but I'm happy to say that we're going to be producing limited editions of this Negra right here, of, of the one that is an exhibit now on Toro Siete. That's right. And what I was going to speak to before about this is that all of the works in exhibition we either have originals available in some of the pieces, but yes, of course, many of them are in private collection. But what we have been able to do with Noel is we have captured some very, very high resolution photographs from the original works and produced some exquisite limited edition and um, open edition fine art prints of many of the works that are here that are in private collection. So you're able to get through us um, a wonderful reproduction print of 
this and many of the other works in this exhibition that are this particular one is actually reproduced on canvas, just like the original work was on canvas, and they're going to be personally retouched by Noel. So um, Noel will add his own extra paint to the print and endorse it with his seal and sign it and authenticate it. And so these are a wonderful way of still cherishing these images and having a beautiful work of art um, that can also be framed by Noel, um, even when the originals have gone on. And I also, I wanna mention from the demanding <laughs> and perfectionist art point of artist point of view, then, you know, you have showed me the quality of the fine art limited edition prints and also the open edition prints that you are publishing by the museum. And I cannot tell you how happy I am to see the quality of the papers that you are using, the canvas that you're using, the inks being used. I have done excellent quality limited editions before with other publishers. And I cannot say enough of the quality of what you produce. For an artist, you know, we are, as, as we created that reputation, yeah, we are very picky because we love what we do and our name and quality is extremely important. So when it comes to producing a limited edition or an open edition print, um, artist proof, unique, whatever the situation is, we are very picky about the paper. We need to fill the no and, and the weight, the everything, the texture. And I, I cannot say enough. And the, what I'm doing with, do, with you is, is, I hate to admit it, not that the other ones are bad, far from it, but these are even superior. Of, and so and I'm extremely happy for that because I know that the limited editions are created. There is a lot of people that love the image and they love the painting, but it's only one original. And when the original is gone, there's many people who just always keep thinking of the painting because when you connect with the piece, like that one, we haven't talked about that. No. You know, and then, but anyway, the quality is amazing that this is one that we're going to do only uniques of this piece. If I'm, if I'm, I think I'm correct about this. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. And the reason being is because this piece is extremely special. This piece, which I did in 2004, and it's called Naciendo, which is the, the actual, the action of being born, you know, and Naciendo is, is kind of like my own version of, you know, all the images of the crucifix, which I love. I grew up Roman Catholic and I love crucifix. My favorite thing about going to the church, it was always to see the crucifix. And I collect crucifix. And I cannot show you because I cannot move my iMac that way. But this whole wall here is packed with crucifix that I collect. So, um, most every relation that we have with the crucifix is very sad and down and negative. And the principle behind this painting is, which was done in 2004, is basically the fact that we are, we are all born with our own cross, our own crucifix that we need to carry around life. And it's up to us how we carry that cross that we make life either wonderful or not so wonderful. So this is my way of showing that intensity and also going a little surrealistic because yes, that's another style of another movement of, of art, which I also love. And I try to inter integrate some time with what I do. So in this case, I went a little Dali almost in a way with all my other influence as well. And I create this painting, which is called Naciendo. And um, basically the cross is always with us, always with us, no matter what. But I can't wait, I can't wait to actually get to see the, the art, you know, when we get to do the artist proof. And 
yes, I decide to part with the original. Yes. Because in reality, it's been in hiding. And my partner and I, Luis, um, we have very similar taste in art, but we agree from the beginning, whatever he has of my work that he likes to keep, and he has pieces that he wants to keep for himself, are in his room, in his own enclosed room. <laughs> because I don't like to have my home around the house, you know, otherwise I never stop working. So this piece has been in hiding for a very long time. And instead of putting it back to hiding, as I just wanted to put it out up there and somebody will fall in love with it and it will be admired the way it's supposed to. And that's a good segue for me to remind everyone watching, because um, we are going to wrap this up, that Silhouettes is another exhibition of works that we have in our museum from Noel. Here is a series of paintings um, that were done from 2016 to 2019, I believe. And we have every, um, most of them in the collection for everyone to see, including some sketches, some earlier versions of them that we have limited edition prints of. And so for all of these in these series, we have limited edition prints as well as there are a few originals left in this series, not many. Um, and so please check out that exhibition and you can get to all of Noel's exhibitions and at his exhibition homepage in the Torosiete Museum by going directly to noel.torosiete.museum. You'll see both versions of his exhibitions. We have the 3D virtual exhibition. We also do like an interactive exhibition where people can see the works um, without having to go through the room. And we actually show the works in um, like virtual spaces, like the ones that are behind me so that you can get a sense of the true scale of the works. And we also show the details of the works. And we can also um, let you know that when you're looking at the exhibition, if there is a work that you're interested in, we may have the original, we may just have a limited edition print, um, and we may be in the process of developing a print in the future. So let us know if there's something you're interested in, even if there isn't something in our store. Of course, Noel will commission works for you as well. They won't be exactly the same as the work um, as he talked about before, but they will be inspired by that piece. And um, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Oh, yes, a direct link to just the store itself. If you wanna take a look at what original works and limited edition prints we currently have available of Noel's work, you can go directly to shop noel.torosiete.museum and you'll see the various works that we have available as originals or limited edition fine art prints. There is one painting that we haven't shown or seen or nothing. And I'm sure she's, she's very upset. Oh no, I don't want to, I don't want to have that happen. Which one, Noel? The pop reflection. Ah, you know, we've, we've glossed back behind it. We've peeked at it. That's right. Cause going back to the theme again of this exhibition and, and maybe, you know, it's less of a retrospective and maybe a survey or, or different series inspired by different art movements. But yes, this um, pop reflections is your sort of foray into doing a little bit of pop art. Exactly. You know, I, I also been entertaining that idea as several people have mentioned to me that although I have a very specific and style that is recognized, I kind of like just go all over the place. And again, that's also as a result of my theatrical background and my set and costume design background. So here is basically creating something of new images and other images that are already existing then I just wanted to do something different and a little more modern, a little more simpler. And that's why I went into the whole pop. There is many studies already done for these pieces. And what makes it very interesting about these pieces, this is in, in the original, but, and of course it happened as a total accident. The whole painting, the whole underpainting of that piece 
is actually done in metallic silvers, pigment. So when I got that blue, which is a combination of two blues, I made that blue lighter with the actual silver. But then I came with the oil. This is a combination of metallic acrylics and oils. And as a result of putting them together and one over the other, and then getting the blue, which is the oil, to blend onto the dry acrylic over it, it creates this translucent feeling that when you shut up, when I shut up all the lights in the studio one night that I was working and I was about to finish, and I shut up everything and it was quite pitch black outside, the painting just blew like neon at once. It was like a wow. total side effect that I didn't even, I wasn't even expected. But if you shut up all the lights in the room, these paintings will glow on their own, which is really, again, a very nice accident. And it makes it even more pop because pop is about popping, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So there is this element of true physical pop that happens on them. But of course, you can only see it in a dark room with no lights on it, you know? But again, even if you see the paintings in, in, in Rio, there is a whole element, which is why the reason why I love to work with the metallic acrylics, then the light becomes the final element. The final medium is the actual light, because if you walk through the painting, around the painting, the iridescence of the actual metallics change totally, totally drastically with every angle of the painting. So, there are other ones coming from pop reflection. The problem is that my creative mind works faster than my real physical mind. And they all take time to produce. So, you know, the fact that now I'm not traveling that much, which has been very hard to deal with it because I do love to travel. <laughs> and um, so, but, you know, being in the studio and being able to work more and to create more, it's, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun to, to come out with all these all the pieces and just play because that's what we do. We play, we play with ideas and we play with mediums and then poof, voila, we make them a painting. Absolutely amazing. It's wonderful to see them all in one place, to see them like this and see all the different styles, all the different techniques, all the different inspirations. And, and like you said, a lot of these are, are series that are still in progress. Um, I see behind you, you have a lot of different works that you're working on that's yes. in these different categories. And it's just amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us, sharing us the stories behind them. I, I encourage everyone to take time when they're going through the exhibition and read uh, the, the notes on each of the works because you've done such a wonderful job to share all of the stories with us. So thank you again. Thank you for all. And, and thank you for thank you for being such a true art lovers. And uh, in order to represent art, it has to be done correctly. And you guys are just perfect. I can I cannot say enough about what you do and how you do it. So it's, thank you. it's, it's like a, it's like a whole other family now. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think we need to end the, the session, although we could probably talk all night about this. Thank um, you. Yeah, I want to remind everyone again to please visit our website at torosiete.museum. You will see all of our exhibitions. Um, many of our artists' works are directly linked from our homepage. We have videos where we go inside of these exhibitions and tell our viewers about specific works, and we have a lot of those in the works for Noel, we're going to go inside of this exhibition and talk about specific works and the details. Like I mentioned before, we have a lot of behind the scenes images where we can share with you the history of a particular piece and how it evolved over time. Um, but again, visit Noel's exhibitions directly at going to noel.torosiete.museum. Also, I encourage you to check out our event calendar. We are doing a long series of these types of artist Q&As. We're going to have Noel back in the future. We have our other artists that we will be doing this same sort of chat with. And so we look forward to having Noel back 
and um, sharing all of his works again. And of course, in the future, we'll be working on an exhibition of this beautiful sculpture, which of course I didn't get to everyone's comments, but we had so many comments about the sculpture. So everyone loves your sculpture, Noel. Thank you for sharing that with us as well. Well, if you, if you keep the comments in there, I will be happy to answer them directly to them either in Instagram or to an email or yeah. directly to the Instagram, you know, handle. So I want to make sure that everybody gets an answer from everything that they ask. That's right. And we have a lot of this video will stay on Facebook. You will see all the original comments that were made during the time the video was live um, from Facebook. And we will be putting this as part of your exhibition on, on your website at uh, noel.torosiete.museum as well as this will be on our YouTube channel as well. So people will be able to look back and watch this. And for those that weren't able to come today, uh, they'll be able to catch it later as well. All, all, all my Barcelona friends and collectors and, you know, all, all, I have so many friends and collectors all over the EU, London, um, the Middle East. I mean, there is, there is works everywhere and they all wanted to be here, but of course, it's time-wise, it's just very hard. The one thing I can't figure out is how to put us all in the same time zone. That that I can't do. So well, maybe what we should do sometimes, we just do one for the EU. How is that? That's true. <laughs> we could do that. We could do that. And thank you to those of you that are in Europe. I um, We've mentioned some of you, but thank you for joining. And again, thank you for everyone. Have a wonderful evening. It has been wonderful uh, to have so many of you here and to have a, an interactive experience with you all. So we really appreciate that. Thank you very much and have a wonderful night. Thank you, very much appreciate it. And thank you for the support. You bet. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.